Well, in this stat cast, we want to take a look at hypothesis tests with large samples. And when we know the stand value of the standard uh, deviation for the population, um, by large samples, we mean sample sizes of, of 30 or more. Uh, when the sample sizes are smaller, well, we have to use a different distribution um, than the normal distribution that we'll talk about a little bit later. So to demonstrate uh, how to do a hypothesis test with large samples, uh, we'll, be, we'll be in section 8.4. And on page 431, we'll try uh, problem number 16. So I've written that one up. Let's take a quick look at it here. It says a simple random sample of 36 cans of regular Coke has a mean volume of 12.19 ounces. Uh, in other words, uh, we took a simple random sample of 36 cans, and then we took the mean of the amount of Coke in those cans, and that mean ended up being 12.19 ounces. And then it says, assume the standard deviation of all cans of regular Coke is 0.11 ounces. Use a 1% significance level to test the claim that cans of regular Coke have volumes with a mean of 12 ounces as stated on the label. In other words, um, these cans of Coke are, are filled up. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit more than 12 ounces, sometimes a little bit less. What we want to know is, um, you know, on the whole, is it really 12 ounces? And secondly, uh, if there is a difference, is that difference substantial? So let's go ahead and get started here by identifying the hypotheses for, for this test. Now, Let's re first remember the guidelines we want to uh, use when we're writing hypotheses. First, we have to remember that with the alternative hypothesis, H sub 1, we always want to use a strict inequality. By that, we mean less than, greater than, or not equal to. Uh, in other words, we don't use anything with a compound inequality, like uh, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or equal to. Those are always in the null hypothesis, H sub 0. So um, since we're testing to see if the, uh, if the, um, the mean volume is, is 12 ounces, I guess that's going to be our null hypothesis. And that's really our claim, that the mean fill of these cans is 12 ounces. So the alternative hypothesis would be, well, it's something different than that. We don't know if it's more or less, but is it something different? So in this case, we use a two-tail test. With a 1% level of significance, and we're given that information. Now we have to find out the critical values associated with a two-tail test and a 1% level of significance. And at your uh, class website, I have a, uh, a handout that I made up that summarizes this for us, so you don't have to go looking it up in the book. And notice if, if you look at the final line here for the two-tail test, where the hypothesis are, um, uh, the null hypothesis is that mu is equal to some value k. The alternative is that mu is not equal to that value. And for a 1% level of significance, it looks like the critical value is plus or minus 2.58. So let's go ahead and record that. So the critical values, all right, CVs are CV equals plus and minus 2.58. Now, uh, the Triola uses um, 2.575, and he gets that by interpolating um, halfway between uh, the values in the standard normal table. That's OK to do if you want to do that. Uh, but all the other values are rounded to two decimal places, and most textbooks use that convention of two decimal places. So we'll we'll go ahead and keep with that. Now our our next um, our next uh, thing to do, our next step would be to compute the test statistic. So let's see. Remember what that is. We'll call that z, and that's x bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of the sample size. So in this case, the mean of the sample was 12.19 minus mu, which was 12, 
from the null hypothesis. The standard deviation was given to be 0.11, and then we're going to divide that by the square root of the sample size, 36. So let's go ahead and compute that and see what we get. So let's see, uh, in the numerator, we have 12.19 minus 12. Notice that I'm using parentheses because there's two terms in the numerator, divided by. Now, in the denominator, I go ahead and use parentheses. They're really not necessary in the denominator because there's two uh, factors involved. Uh, but just to kind of keep things straight in our mind, I always like to use parentheses for that. So we have 0.11, our standard deviation, divided by the square root. Remember, that's second and the x squared key of 36. That's our sample size. So we close the radicand and then close the denominator. And so it looks like our test statistic is rounded to two decimal places, um, 10.36. So let's go ahead and record that now. All right. So think about that for a minute now. Let's go ahead and draw, draw a graph of what we have here. Here's our standard normal curve. Here's zero right here. And our critical values are, we have two of them, negative 2.58 and 2.58. Now that's 2.58. Now think about our, our test statistic. It's 10.36. So it's way, way, way out here. It even goes off the screen. I'll just kind of put it there so we know it's way out here. All right. So that's our test statistic Z. Now, as you can tell, our, since our test statistic is way far to the right, it's in the rejection region. All right, so in other words, what we want to do is to reject the null hypothesis. So let's go ahead and, and uh, that, that's, that's what we found from our test. Let's go ahead and write a, conclu a conclusion now. So there is sufficient evidence uh, to reject uh, the claim that the mean fill of the Coke cans is 12 ounces. Now it asked, uh, you know, so we found a statistically significant difference between uh, what we found in our sample and what the uh, population mean claimed to be. So we found a statistically significant difference, but if we if we think about it, um, the difference is not practically different. So let me let me write that down. But the difference, you know, which is 0.19 ounces is not practically different. In other words, you know, if you're drinking a can of Coke, you wouldn't know if there was uh, 0.19 ounces uh, missing or, or it was over 12.19 ounces. It's, it's, it's a very small volume. Now, one more thing I wanted to talk about um, with the uh, test like this is how we can use the built-in functions of our graphing calculator to go ahead and compute a hypothesis test for large samples. So to do that, we'll hit the stat button and go over to the third menu that says test. And the very first test is the Z test. Those, those are the tests that we're doing. So um, there's two ways to do it. You can either have raw data, so you could have like 36 numbers you could type in list number one, but we don't have that. We have summary statistics. So I'm going to highlight stats and hit the enter key. And now we just go down through and uh, fill in the values that we know. First, the null hypothesis is 12. And then the standard deviation is 0.11. The sample mean is 0.129 and the sample size was 36 and then down below we want to know what type of test we want to put in whether it be a um, 
a two-tail test, the first option, a left